So this just came to me, and I don't know, um, I was literally thinking about what I was gonna, um, make this video about, um, and this is the chapter where, um, you know, if you know my webtoon, Sky's Shadows Come Out to Play, <laughs> and, um, if you want to read it, I'll leave it linked in the description, but, um, yeah, and about this, so I, this idea just randomly came to me, and it was when I was watching a pick a card, um, <laughs> I'll actually link that pick a card down below too because I just had an epiphany type of moment and um, so yeah now I'm recording this if I get interrupted I will continue recording this later but um yeah so what I wanted to say was like in in this chapter we're kind of seeing Sky and he's going through this thing where his shadows just kind of, he has like, it's like in his mind, and I was hoping that people would kind of, and if you don't know my webtoon, I'm just gonna gloss over it real quick, um, but basically, like, he has been going through a situation where he's constantly in a state of worry, he constantly is worried about how long will this happiness last, like, when will it go wrong, kind of thing, um, and he's overthinking a lot, and he thinks that, you know, this happiness he has with Petal is, like, fleeting, <laughs> basically, because any moment he was ever feeling kind of stable, it would pretty much all fall apart. <laughs> and that's, you know, kind of what we go through in our healing journeys just in general. We have tower moments constantly throughout the entire journey of healing. And, you know, healing isn't linear, and healing is never done. <laughs> you know, you're constantly healing your entire life. And so... Um, that's what it's all about. And basically, what happens to him in this in this chapter is that his shadows come out to play and they are not, <laughs> you know, they're all the parts of him that he's been pushing down, that he's been suppressing, that he's been kind of hiding away and not really, you know, not really thinking about. And, you know, when you when you kind of push it away and you try to ignore it, it's gonna just build up and kind of explode at some point. And so that's what happens to him in this chapter. So basically, I'm going to not go into detail about it because I don't want to spoil anything. But, you know, he's faced with a situation in which this happiness he has with Petal is kind of in jeopardy of being over and kind of just, uh, like, gone from his life, basically. And he has a moment where he's feeling, like, you know, anxious, panic attack type of thing. And I gotta say, weirdly enough, my feelings actually end up syncing up a lot with these webtoon chapters I do. <laughs> so I guess I'm just really, I'm either channeling my own energy or I'm just really in it. <laughs> but anyway, so when he goes through all this, he's basically trying to, um, you know, he, he's trying to pull himself back, he's trying to suppress it, he's trying to just think happy thoughts, but that doesn't always work, and sometimes the shadows win. And basically, when the shadows win, you kind of just gotta surrender. <laughs> There's nothing else to do, you gotta just feel the, the way it feels, you have to just let it, not let it consume you, but just feel it. And I wanted to make this video because that's basically what happened to me. I was kind of ignoring and just, you know, I'd have these moments throughout my day randomly where I would feel like I just got to hold on. I'll just hold on. Don't like panic, you know, and like there's nothing really going on around me that would be a cause of panic. It's all mental. It's all the ego. <laughs> and um, I'm going to do a separate video about how the ego uses the shadow to protect you, but oftentimes if you're not aware of this, then you can literally end up, I mean, a lot of people have kind of been overtaken by their shadows, and that's how, you know, stuff like depression and like, um, um, you know, anxiety and panic attacks and stuff like that, that's how it kind of, like, they're overtaken by it, and they don't know how to handle it, so they just let it go crazy, and... You know, part of it is just as soon as you feel any inkling of anything kind of quote-unquote negative that you don't like, just sit in that for a moment and, like, feel it and acknowledge it and be like, why am I feeling this way? <laughs> so I will use myself as an example because obviously I can only really talk from my own experience, but I'm, you know, manifesting a, what's it called? <laughs> 
I'm manifesting an SP, I guess. Let's just call it that. It's my divine love. I'm manifesting him into my life. And <laughs> I know who he is. And like every time I see a picture of him, if I ever see, okay, so this I've kind of gotten rid of since then because this is something I've been able to recognize and be like, why does this bother me? And then I was sat in it and then I let it go. And so anytime I would see a picture of him with a girl, even if it was someone that was not even like, like he's not even dating them. I just see him with a girl. I would get so triggered. And I'm like, why do I feel so upset about this? And I couldn't understand why, but I wouldn't sit in it long enough. I would just kind of, you know, see it. And then I'd kind of, you know, they tell you to shift your thought as soon as you think it. So I would just shift my thought and be like, oh, he loves me. He's obsessed with me. I don't have to worry about it. He's mine. You know, that, that, that's what I would do. But that feeling of like every single time I would see it, it would, I would feel uncomfortable or I would feel a certain type of way <laughs> and so I realized this and I was like well what 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 can I do to get rid of this because at some point it kind of just like <laughs> it was annoying to me I'm like why am I if I if I am living in the end if I am living in the I just saw synchronicity but I, I won't say what it was but anyway <laughs> it wasn't like number alignment it was just something that means something to me and and him in our connection, right? But anyway, so I'm just, <laughs> but anyway, so I would see this and like, you know, I would feel like, why do I feel insecure? Why do I feel like if I'm living in the end and we're together and we're happy and like, I'm the only one he wants, I'm the only one he looks at, you know, I'm the only girl in his life. <laughs> like I would, I would be like, if I'm, if this is the end that I want, why do I keep getting triggered whenever I see a picture of him with a girl? <laughs> and it took me a while to kind of realize what it was. And it was that, you know, and I, I said, and then one day I just saw another random picture and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to look at this. I'm going to sit in it and I'm just going to feel the jealousy, the, all of those feelings that were coming up. And then as soon as I did that, they went away <laughs> and I'm like, it's kind of like you shine a light on your shadow attributes, like any of the stuff that makes you feel like that triggers your shadow. And it doesn't even be, have to be that you actually know why. It could just be like you feel something negative or you don't feel good about something and you're, 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 you get a feeling in your gut kind of like, why does this bother me? And then you just got to sit in it and be like, why does it bother me? And sometimes you don't even get an answer. Sometimes it's just like, the longer you stare at that picture or the longer you look at the situation, whatever it is, for me, it was a picture. So I was just staring at a picture and for you, it might be a picture. Um, and this could apply to anything, not just like, you know, love. It can apply to anything in your life, but basically just look at that and be like, why is this triggering me? And oftentimes it'll be some kind of subconscious pattern that you've been playing over and over in your mind. And so for me, I've talked about this before, um, <laughs> briefly in my twin flame video, my divine love twin flame video and how in the past I was with I had a relationship with someone not my divine counterpart someone else I had a relationship with them and um this guy and he you know started and he always he always had this kind of pattern <laughs> but he would always start dating someone else or like not necessarily cheating because it was never really a legit relationship. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it started in middle school, so whatever. But there was always this pattern of him going out with someone else. And then I would just be like, okay, well, he doesn't care about me. So I'm just not gonna, you know, I just brush it under the rug and not really address it. And then the last time it happened, he actually got someone else pregnant. <laughs> and apparently she was pregnant before we were dating. So, I mean, to me, that's straight up karmic situation, honestly. But to me, that was like, okay, I'm done with this person. Like, I'm not going to go back with this. So, yeah. Um, but it was like a constant pattern of like, I had some limiting belief of like, guys always like choose someone else. Like, I'm not good enough for them. So you know, something like that. And so then that manifested into my divine love, literally not even being with other people. He doesn't really, he doesn't date really. He's more focused on his career and stuff. Same with me. Um, but like, it's like, it's like that manifested, that feeling manifested from just seeing a picture of him with any girl. <laughs> and I'm like, 
oh, that's what it was. So when I figured out what it was, I was able to kind of dispel it and be like, and not even worry about it. I sat in that feeling and I acknowledged it. And I kind of shine, shine a light on that thing. And I've been, I've used this technique for pretty much other things. Like, um, I pretty much got rid, I'm not completely, I gotta be honest, I'm not completely <laughs> rid of my anxiety, but like, I've, I've used this technique on my anxiety and been like, you know, also like what manifestation coaches say, they say, where are you putting your focus? Cause that's where the energy is going to grow. So I'm saying like for a while, ever since I'm going to say ever since the Corona thing happened, <laughs> ever since that, I've kind of just been like you know, um, constantly worried in a constant state of worry. And I'm sure I'm not the only one, but you know, what you feed grows. And I'm not saying don't take it seriously, obviously take it seriously, you know, be proactive in protecting yourself and your family, however you feel you can. But, um, you know, I was constantly worried about it. And every single day, I've like the whole quarantine, like when it was, when everyone was inside and we all kind of stayed on lockdown, um, all over the world, like, I kept thinking, wait, do I have it? Like, I would overthink, like, wait, do I have it? Like, and I wouldn't have any symptoms, but I would just literally feel, you know, when you're inside for a long time, you start to feel blah, you start to feel a certain type of way. And, you know, when there's a cause, there's a reason for it in terms of what's going on in the world, then you're kind of like, wait, is that what's happening to me? And that's not at all what's happening to me. <laughs> I, but I kind of would make up all these crazy scenarios. And then it's the whole thing of like, you don't want to go to the hospital because you know of what's happening right now. And it's just like, well, if, even if it's not that, it could be something else, but I wouldn't know because then, and it's like, I was like, go on these thought trains and I'm like, why am I doing this? And I did this for a whole year, <laughs> you know? And, um, I still kind of do it sometimes. And I'm just like, why do I keep doing this? Ever since I saw that first report from like, you know, a mysterious illness discovered in, in China or whatever. And I'm just like, what the heck is that? <laughs> you know, because, um, you know, you just like worry about people. And then also being an empath, you like pick up that energy. And obviously you're not manifesting symptoms of, you know, whatever's happening, but you do kind of feel the collective kind of energy right now. And it's really heavy. And so we have to be gentle with ourselves and stuff. And so in terms of like how I released myself from that was like, I had been watching um, manifestation videos and there was one I saw that said, what are you focusing on? Like, where is your focus going? Because whatever you focus on, and I did not realize it until this person said it. <laughs> I'll leave that video link below too, because it helped me. It might help you. Where are you putting your focus? And then it was like something switched in my head. And I was like, I'm focusing on my worry. And I was scared because I thought I was manifesting bad things in my life. And I hope this can help people that might see this video um, that might be going through this too. When you discover manifestation, you start to think anything is possible. And at first it's like, whoa, really? And then you start manifesting little things like, oh, I got a text message from this random person that I haven't talked to in forever. And then they texted me like, whoa, that's so cool. Or like, you know, you get a free drink. Um, you get a free drink at like, you know, a free coffee. Or, you know, s interesting things start happening. You're like, this is so cool. I manifested my exes back and I didn't even want them. I did that on accident. <laughs> but, you know, you start to manifest all these things. You're like, this really works. But then when you have anxiety like me, when you have anxiety, you start to think, wait. And then you have one run negative thought and you're like, wait what would happen if this happened? And then it goes into a train <laughs> and my meditation does help. But then even for, for me, meditation ended up making me anxious because I started, I guess, um, my Kundalini started activating and I didn't know what that meant. And I got scared. I didn't think I was getting possessed by a demon because I don't believe in duality. So I didn't think it was that. I thought it was actually something physical, like, you know, happening in my body, which technically it is when the Kundalini activates, it can like, you can feel it physically. And so but I was scared, <laughs> so I stopped meditating. So yeah, so I stopped meditating, and then, you know, it just made me feel like, oh my gosh, like, I can't do this either, and I thought I was going to be calm, and blah blah blah, and you know, my heart chakra randomly activated, and I kind of realized, like, I don't know if anybody else thought to really talk about this, but basically, like, I had connected to my divine counterpart while he was exercising. <laughs> And so my heart started beating at the same rate as his. And he goes really hard when he exercises. So, <laughs> yeah. 
but for me, I freaked out, so that's, that's, yeah, but anyway, so what I mean to say when I say all this is that, like, that thought train that happens, and then you end up kind of, like, tripping yourself out and thinking that, that bad things are gonna happen because of all these random, you know, because you can manifest everything, so why not manifest bad things too, even if you don't want them? Like, you, you're, you like, trying to constantly check your thoughts, and it becomes, like, an anxiety type of thing. And so that's what happened to me, and if this could help anyone, I'm just gonna say this. You cannot manifest bad things from worry. It literally can't happen. And I'm gonna say that again. You literally can't manifest bad things from worrying about manifesting bad things. The only thing you're manifesting is worry. The only thing you're manifesting is anxiety. The only thing you're manifesting is the constant state of worry because you're in a constant state of worry. <laughs> That's it. You're not really going to manifest bad things because you're not thinking in terms of the scenario of how would it feel for this bad thing to happen. Because you don't know what that feels like. You literally don't. And you're not going to force yourself into thinking about how it feels like because you're trying to force the thought away. So unless it has happened to you before, and again, like, because, you know, that becomes like the cyclical, 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 I'm not entirely sure how to say that, cyclical, that becomes the cycle. You know, I got scared that I would accidentally hurt my neck again after I hurt my neck. That's something I have to, you know, constantly, you know, and I do take the action of working out frequently so that never happens again. So I'm okay. It's not going to happen to me again because I'm careful. I'm not, like, crazy. I don't sit all day anymore. I take better care of myself now. So I've taken the steps physically to make sure that doesn't happen again. And, like, if it's something that's never happened to you, if you're generally a healthy person and, like, you know that in general, like, you know, nothing is going to happen. This is not related to, like, the corona thing, but I mean just in general, like, generally speaking, like, nothing will miraculously, not necessarily miraculously, but just randomly go wrong because you know that you're generally healthy, your family, you know, like, all of that stuff. Like, there's no need to worry about it. <laughs> Like, if it's not something that runs in your family, if it's not something that you've ever experienced yourself, there's nothing to worry about. So, like, why are you worried? You're just manifesting more worry. So that's what my soul, I guess, told to my ego. I told my ego that, like, you are in a constant state of worry, and that's what you're manifesting. You're just manifesting more reasons to worry. <laughs> and when I realized that, I'm like, oh my god. And it was like a light bulb went off in my head and I was like it like a switch happened and I literally haven't been worrying since <laughs> and I do get those random feelings like oh does that mean something oh I feel weird there is almost always a cause for it and I've also realized that since I've kind of like acknowledged this whole kind of connection that I have with my divine love whenever something feels weird in my body and there's no cause for it like so I was, um, there was a certain time where I felt so hungry and I didn't know why. I had no idea why I was so hungry. And I'm like, why do I feel so hungry? I'm like eating as much as I always do. Like I'm not eating excessively and then not eating. Like I'm eating a steady amount that I've always eaten, but I felt so hungry and it didn't make sense. And then I come to find out that my divine love was actually starving himself to appear a certain way at the same time. Like, it literally happened at the same time. What? <laughs> um, and I'm like, it was him. <laughs> so it's kind of like when you're in these divine connections also, you can kind of feel what they feel. And so you're kind of, what they're doing is transferring to you. And then what you do can transfer to them. So as the, like, kind of awakened one to all of this spiritual stuff, you kind of have to take the, 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 you know, you kind of have to be able to transmute that energy and, like, acknowledge that too. So if it's something that normally never happens to you or doesn't make sense or is just happening out of nowhere and there's no cause for it, that's probably your divine counterpart, um, doing something stupid. <laughs> For lack of a better word, you know, um, that's what it is. So for me, that's what this kind of thing is. It's about the way to free yourself from your mindset and the way that you think 
the way you do that is by shining a light on anything that makes you feel a certain way. You have to look at it. You have to, and you have to be like, why? You have to ask yourself, why am I feeling this way? Why is this bothering me? What is happening in my life right now that is triggering me so much? And then once you do that, you'll be able to actually not worry about anything. And then things will slowly, stuff will change and things will shift and you'll be able to, you know, live your life without worry. And, uh, you know, I'm still kind of worried about stuff. I've always been kind of a worrier a little bit, but, you know, since I've been able to shine a light on it and be like, why does this bother me? This doesn't make sense. <laughs> and then like that energetic kind of, I guess, um, cord that runs between like you and your, your divine counterpart that you can kind of feel their energy, whatever they do. So that's part of why I've stopped drinking coffee too. Cause he drinks a lot of coffee. I can't drink coffee anymore, <laughs> but yeah. So for me, that's what I've kind of realized what it is. If it's not my energy, it's his energy. And then I can just be like, oh, that's what he's doing. Let me kind of remedy this on my side to make sure he's feeling okay. <laughs> it kind of becomes a like nurturing yourself so the other feels, you know, that nurturing, you know? And that's kind of how you got to look at it. You, you can't look at it at a th like a 3D perspective, like what is happening to me, survival mode immediately. Like it, it doesn't, it, it's, it's not a sustainable type of way to, way to think. <laughs> I'm not very good at talking. <laughs> I get so, like, weird with words. But anyway. So, yeah. Um, in terms of, like, the shadow and the ego and all that. And, like, like freeing yourself from these limiting beliefs or these negative thought patterns and all that. That's what I've realized works for me. Whenever something pops up in my reality, I just kind of look at it and I ask myself why. I kind of like analyze the feeling you literally have to it's not reacting to it it's sitting in it and identifying what is bothering you because there's always going to be something that pops up in your reality that bothers you <laughs> and so you know that's kind of an example of how I've been able to kind of address that in myself and I thought it could help other people um so if you're constantly like worried that you're going to manifest bad things you're not going to manifest bad things you're just going to manifest more worry and if all you're manifesting is worry, as, it's as simple as mindset shift. You're just manifesting more worry. And I don't know how many times I have to say it, but just tell yourself that. You're not manifesting bad things. You're manifesting worry of bad things. But the state in which you are in is not the bad thing you're worried about. It's the worry. <laughs> so I hope that helped. Um, I... Um, that's basically what, what happened to Sky in this in this chapter. Um, he was worried so much that he manifested a reason to worry. <laughs> he manifested, you know, more worry. Um, and it turned out to not be too bad, but it was pretty bad in the moment because when you're in it, it feels awful. <laughs> but, you know, it's that kind of thing. You, you, you kind of release it and then you're able to kind of, like, return back to your center. You have to be really patient and, like, honest with yourself and also like gentle with how you kind of deal with it you can't look at yourself like a like drill instructor and like you know act like a crazy person you don't want to do that but you just got to acknowledge like this is not what I want so I'm gonna stop <laughs> and it does it I mean for some people it takes a lot for me it took a while to just be like no I'm done I don't want this that's what I did. Um, so I hope this helped. I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna go, um, I'm gonna upload this video. And today I'm filming a what I eat in a day, so <laughs> I'm gonna go eat something. <laughs> um, so if you want to read my, um, webtoon, I'll leave it linked below. Sometimes it, like, redirects you to the main webtoon site. I don't know why, but, um, it's called Polaris by Roses in the River if you're interested in it. And I'm going to get going now. Um, yes. Okay, bye.